So you wanna learn a little bit more about Cloverdale BC? Well, you're in luck because in today's video, I'm gonna be covering both the pros and the cons of living in Cloverdale BC. So stay tuned for that. What's going on guys? My name's Alex Dunbar and I'm a realtor with Remax Treeland Realty and the Dunbar Real Estate Group based out of the Cloverdale Langley area. And in today's video, I'm gonna be going over the pros and the cons of living in Cloverdale, BC. I've personally spent the last five years living there as well as operating my business out of Cloverdale. And that's why I'm so passionate about sharing this information. But as with any location, there's always gonna be some bad to go with the good. And today I wanna to shed some light on that. But let's start it off on a positive note with pro number one, the parks and outdoor areas. According to the City of Surrey's website, there are 38 parks in total at the moment. The largest and most notable is probably Cloverdale Athletic Park. And this is located at the corner of 64th and 168th. It's nearly 50 acres in size, which includes artificial turf fields, all weather fields, softball diamonds, tennis courts, a basketball court, a lacrosse box, a water park, a playground, walking and running trails, and the Cloverdale Bike Park. Cloverdale is also home to one of Surrey's largest off-leash dog parks, and this is located in the specific region of Clayton. You've also got the Bill Reed Millennium Amphitheater, where there are tons of events held. And when there's not events going on, you can often find people walking through the park or having a picnic there. You can also find lots of trails or green belts go for walks or runs all across the community. And I can't forget to mention Northview Golf Course, which is home to 36 holes, two courses, and is famous because the PGA Tour used to be played there. Being a golfer myself, it's somewhere I like to go to treat myself from time to time because the quality is absolutely excellent. So if you're a golfer as well, you're gonna wanna check it out. Now moving on to con number one, it's the homelessness and crime. But I do have to specify that this is primarily located in the downtown area. So unfortunately, there've been a lot of long-term low-income rentals that have helped lead to this situation. And for that reason, downtown Cloverdale is not somewhere I would suggest purchasing. Keep in mind though, that this is a very small area and Cloverdale is very large. And as with most places, you're always gonna find pockets of bad within the good. But back to the pros, we have number two, which is the community. Cloverdale is home to several amazing events. Some of these being the Clover Valley Beer Festival, Gone Country, and of course the Cloverdale Rodeo. You're guaranteed to see a ton of locals at these events as well as others who come from outside the community. But it definitely helps add to that small town feel of Cloverdale. There's also the Sunday Flea Market and the Clayton Community Market, which occurs during the summer months. These are some great events that you can go check out with the family and support some local businesses. Cloverdale also has two recreation centers, an arena, and a curling rink, all of which help lead into pro number three, that Cloverdale's family friendly. There are a ton of great elementary schools as well as three fantastic high schools, including the almost brand new Salish Secondary School. If your kids are into sports, there's probably a club for them here. You've got Sur United Soccer Club, Cloverdale Minor Hockey and Baseball, and Cloverdale Community Football Association. Not to forget Surrey Storm Fast Pitch Association. You're also able to find recreational adult leagues if you're looking to play sports as well. Cloverdale also has all the amenities that you need for a growing family. And if there's anything that's missing, Langley's only about 10 minutes away. Now, heading back over to the cons, we have a lack of parking and congestion. This is in regards to the Clayton area of Cloverdale and specifically where the detached houses are, especially the ones with carriage houses and basement suites. So unfortunately with this housing, there's often up to three families living in a single residence and they may only have four or five parking spots. Now, as you can likely do the math, if each of those families has multiple cars, there's nowhere really to put them. So street parking can be an absolute nightmare and some of the streets are pretty tight. As for the rest of Cloverdale though, you're never really gonna have this issue. Additionally, for townhomes and condos, it's not really that much of an issue either. Also in relation to parking, the transit is con number three. Now that's not to say that you can't get anywhere without a car in Cloverdale, however, you're more than likely gonna need it. Or if you don't need it, it's gonna make your life a lot more convenient. Don't get me wrong, there are tons of buses and main streets where you can get to the SkyTrain or get to where you wanna go, but it's just gonna be a lot more difficult than if you were living in, let's say, Central Surrey. So not the end of the world, but it's obviously gonna make your life a little bit more of a hassle if you don't have a car. However, a little secret that you may or may not know is that the SkyTrain is soon coming up Fraser Highway all the way through Cloverdale and into Langley. So although transit may not be ideal at the moment, in the near future, it's really going to be. 
And now on to pro number four, it is housing and rental costs. So in comparison to Vancouver, Cloverdale housing costs are more than 30% cheaper. To give some context to this, the median price for a single family detached home in Vancouver is 2.3 million, whereas in Cloverdale, it's 1.5. For a townhome in Vancouver, you're looking at 1.238 million, whereas in Cloverdale, it's gonna be $770,500. And for a condo in Vancouver, you're looking at $776,000, whereas in Cloverdale, you're looking at 502. I should also mention that both detached homes and townhouses are slightly less than the rest of Surrey and Cloverdale, but apartments are slightly higher. In regards to rent price, Cloverdale is about 25% cheaper than Vancouver. For example, a one bedroom apartment in Vancouver would be about $2,050 a month, whereas Cloverdale would be closer to 1,500. Moving on to con number four is the nightlife. Unfortunately, if you're a partier, Cloverdale doesn't have much of a nightlife scene. They do have a couple of bars and restaurants that open up dance floors towards the end of the night. However, that's about the extent of it. So if you are looking to get your party on, you're probably gonna have to head downtown for the evening. And now on to con number five is that it rains a lot. So if you're from the Lower Mainland, this may not come as a surprise to you, but if you're not, Surrey is very similar to Vancouver, also known as Raincouver, so we do get a lot of rain. Now, it's not like it's raining every single day, but through the winter and the spring, we do get quite a few showers. I should also mention that during our winters, it can get dark around 4 or 4.30. Obviously, this isn't the end of the world, but it's something you should keep in mind. However, on the contrary, pro number five is that we have mild winters. So for the most part, it really doesn't get that cold here. We don't see negative 40 temperatures. We rarely see snow. We just get a lot of rain. And to add to that, we have the fairest weather in all of Canada. So we may get slightly shorter summers than other cities and provinces. However, overall, we don't see too much of one extreme or the other. We do get snow maybe once or twice a year during the winter, but it's typically gone within a day or two. But the slight downside to that is no one knows how to drive in the snow here. But as I said, that's okay, because it doesn't happen very often. Now moving on to my last and final point, it's kind of a pro and a con, it really depends. And that is location. Now the reason I say this is Cloverdale is very central to a lot of things. It's about a 40 minute drive to Vancouver, a 30 minute drive to Abbotsford, 15 minutes to the Golden Ears Bridge, and about 20 minutes to the US border. You can be at White Rock Beach in 25 minutes, but you could also be in Maple Ridge. So if you're someone who works from home or nearby, this actually makes things quite convenient. However, if you're someone that has to head to downtown Vancouver or Chilliwack, this could obviously cause some issues. So it really just comes down to what your lifestyle looks like, what your interests are, and where your job's at. And that's about gonna do it for today's video, but if you do have any questions or comments, please rate them down below and I'd be happy to get back to you. And if you are interested in moving to Cloverdale or one of the surrounding areas, or maybe you just have questions, don't hesitate to reach out and I'd be happy to have a conversation with you. You can find my contact information down below. Feel free to call, text, email, whatever you'd like. I've been getting lots of calls lately from people moving into the Cloverdale area and I'm always happy to help. If you did get any value out of today's video, I'd appreciate if you hit that like button and if you're interested in any future real estate content related to Cloverdale or any of the surrounding areas, I'll ask that you subscribe to my channel and click the bell to make sure you know when my videos are getting released. Thanks so much for watching today and we'll see you in the next video.